Bada bum bum bum. I don't know how to do that. Oh, that's the um. Okay, I'm not gonna be adjusting cameras every time I make a video, cause that's giving ghetto. It's giving unprepared. It's giving don't know what you're doing. It's giving. I need to fix that pillow because that look a mess. If MNF, my mom is watching this video, she's gonna be like, "Why are you recording and it's messy in the background? Don't nobody wanna see all that." What she cook? She cooked some um. She cooked like this like Alfredo pasta stuff with shrimp, and I think she put chicken in it. Man, that was good. Let me fix this pillow before my mama get me. Hey everybody, my name's Tony. If you're new here, um, I'm 21 years old and um, I'm really taking a bet. I'm really betting on myself with this content and I would love, love to do full-time content creation. I'm currently in college. I'm studying Spanish and entrepreneurship. I attend the University of Tennessee, Ch Chattanooga in my hometown. And when I graduate, I'll be graduating with two degrees. The reason why I am making a video today is because I am going to be studying abroad in Costa Rica for one month this summer. Um, one of the main reasons why I want to study abroad and why I'm I'm really excited to study abroad. It's because, as I mentioned earlier, I am a double major in Spanish and entrepreneurship. Um, regarding the Spanish side of things, I've always had this inner passion for learning language. Currently, I want to increase my fluency in the Spanish language. I want to be able to conversate um, effic efficiently. And I believe that studying abroad for me um, is a way of completely immersing myself so I could really increase my vocabulary. And just, I just hear a lot of good things about studying abroad. Let's just be honest. I am planning on vlogging my entire experience um, while I'm there at Costa Rica. I might not be vlogging every day, but I, I would love to try at least do something like that. I'm not really good at editing, as I've said before. I really wanna just like, document my experience while I'm down there because I've tried to like I've researched before like people who've done study abroad programs and the videos were were good but I didn't really see anybody talk about like their entire experience like it was very much like so a quick recap in a summary but like what was it like how did you feel being getting like a complete lol English how did you feel being in a completely different country um, I wanted to know, like, how were you mentally? How were you, how was your mental health? And what was it like trying to adapt to a new, like, system? Like, because you're going to be in a different country, so it's like, the government is probably different, currency. Like, how was that? I just didn't really see a lot of people go into depth about their experiences, which is fine. They don't have to. That's their choice. That is their business. But for me personally, I want to be that person that, like, shares that experience online. So how I chose this program specifically, I have thought about choosing other programs like, this is my third year of college, but I have thought about choosing other programs like last year when I was a sophomore, I was gonna try to do this like Spain trip. And I went to like the meeting that they had about it, which like usually, depending on your college, I don't know if your college is, whoever is in college, I don't know if your schools do the same thing, but usually if they're trying to get students to go on a study abroad trip, they usually will post a flyer. Specifically, people who are Spanish majors, they'll like email um, the students that are studying Spanish. The, the email will basically say, hey, I'm ha we're having a meeting based on like, if you're interested in like, maybe going on this specific study abroad program and trip, and um, I had gotten an email last year for a trip to go to Spain. And <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> at the bottom of the email, it said free pizza. <laughs> I skipped the whole email. I was like, man, I'm going. I am going. I'm going. <laughs> That's so greedy. 
It's every piece of <laughs> I think I was the first one that <laughs> I think I was the first one that showed him today. <laughs> I was like bit pizza. But also I was I was still interested <laughs> in the program, but I did want that pizza though. <laughs> that is so greedy thinking about it. <laughs> Man, and we and it was Papa John's. Child, Papa John's is some good pizza. Yeah, so like I went to the meeting because I was interested. I'm not really like knowledgeable of study abroad in general because I've never done it. This is this is my first time doing it, but I do know that they have different programs. Well, specifically with my college, they have different programs. You can do like an internship opportunity, a research opportunity, um, or you could do a faculty led program, which is a professor of the department will be kind of running that trip somewhat, sort of. That Like they'll go on the trip with the students. Um, obviously they'll be living in completely different places, but within that city the professor kind of keeps up with like the students um during like the entire however long the program that specific program is so yeah i was in the meeting and they started talking about cost and housing i was really immature i desperately wanted to go but like to really commit and to be disciplined enough to making sure you save up money to get costs and that just, all of that was just so overwhelming. And I was just like, no. But the next school year comes around, which was last year, um, last August, um, I'm in this class with this professor at the Spanish class. And he was like, hey, there's this opportunity to do a study abroad program in Costa Rica. And I was like, yeah, I'm going. Like, he didn't say nothing about food. If he said something about food, I would have been double times excited. But I was already excited. And it was going to be a faculty-led program, but we didn't have enough students to, like, sign up. So now it's just, I'm just going straight through the program. There are still classmates and students from my university that's going on the same trip. So we have formed a group chat so we can communicate with each other. The first thing I started doing was applying for scholarships because your boy is broke and your boy don't work during school. Your boy only got savings that he needs for school. And I can't be touching them savings even though I still do for food. Mind your business, all right? My business is my business. Your business is your business. I'm sorry. But yeah, <laughs> first thing I started doing was applying for scholarships. And even that in itself was kind of... For me personally, I, I felt myself grow because even like applying for scholarships was discipline because I get distracted really easily. And so a lot of the scholarships that I applied for, I had to write like essays and they weren't even long essays. They were like 300 words, 500 words. But like I had to really like commit myself and be disciplined enough to like actually sit down and write out. And thank God I've been approved for those scholarships. Like. I was so surprised and shocked. I'm still waiting to hear back from like other scholarships that I applied for. To see, I hope I got them to see if, you know, I've been approved. The second thing I started filling out at like the actual application for the program, because you know, the classes that I will take will be directly from the university down there in Costa Rica. I'll be, I'll be in Heredia, Costa Rica, by the way. I will take two classes down there and I will take two classes at my actual university that way like i can get financial aid the way financial aid work you have to have a certain amount of hours to qualify for financial aid there's this thing called like the the course pre-approval form where like the head of the department has to like approve the classes that you're taking so you can get credit from the classes that you're taking through the university down there so that the credits will transfer over to your actual university. It's all really confusing. You see why I was overwhelmed because there's so much forms and paperwork you have to fill out. I had to apply for a passport. Passports usually range, like if you're just paying like the regular fee, you usually end up paying like $180 or so. I got the expedition, expedition fee. Basically what the expedition fee does is if you pay that fee, it's like rushing the order. That way you can get your passport within like three to like four weeks. I think if you pay the regular fee without paying the expedition fee, you usually end up having to wait like one or two months. Like 
it just really depends. So like right now, the government is super backed up, so people are still still ha still haven't received their passports. Thank God, I've received mine because the university down there and the uni our actual university they need to see like proof of the passport. The expedition fee is like sixty bucks, so I end up paying. $240 because I end up getting my picture taken too so that was an extra $19 and I got mine done at the post office not all post offices do pictures so some sometimes you'll have to go get your picture taken at the CVS bring the picture and give it to the post office people so that then they can ship it off to like whatever they shipped it off ship ship it off at I don't know where they ship it, but thank God my professor was able to set me up an appointment and it was a really quick process for me. I don't think this is gonna be the case for everybody. I think it just depends on where you live. Um, luckily, it wasn't oversaturated with clients the day that I had my appointment. That's that with the passport. Um, Make sure you do your passport like ASAP. But there's such a high demand for passports and I think the reason that it was explained to me during the pandemic, not a lot of people were traveling. So not many people needed to get passports. But now that we're coming out of that like limited travel type thing, a lot more people are traveling and a lot more people are going outside the country. So there is such a high demand for passports, which is causing like a back up with i don't i really don't know there's i just know that there's a bag up in the government to where people are not really receiving um their passports within the time that is usually because usually i think it's like five to six weeks whatever. so you have the passport stuff and then like yeah i'm still filling out a lot of paperwork like a lot once i got my passport i had to upload that send that to the enrollment advisor at the university that i'm going to down there um, also, I will be living with a Costa Rican family. Um, and from what I hear, the Costa Rican family does not speak English at all, which will really help me in my Spanish because, you know, I, it'll force me to use my Spanish. One of the paperwork that I had to submit was, it's this thing called financial aid disbursement form. I don't know if all programs do this, but the tuition for this total trip is $4,980. That does not include me booking flights. 4980 that's just like the tuition of the university and then the housing and basically what that does is it'll defer that tuition payment because the deadline is on april 15th so yeah uh that's literally in a couple days or depending on when, when you're watching this it probably already passed but yeah basically what that disbursement form does is it defers the payment so i don't have to pay it by the deadline that way i can wait on like the to see how much financial aid is going to cover, how much scholarships I'm going to be receiving. And they'll apply all of that aid, all that scholarships and grants and whatever I'm going to receive to that tuition. And then I'll just pay the rest. I, I, hopefully, prayerfully, I will be getting full funding. Another thing that I had to do was some medical information. So like, do I have any allergies? Am I allergic to anything? Have I received COVID vaccination? Uh, they need my emergency contact. Like if something happens to me, God, nothing's gonna happen to me in Jesus' name. Why am I raising my hands? Ghetto. They need to know who they need to contact, so I just put my parents' information, obviously. I can't wait till I'm actually just there. Like, I just wanna be there. See what else. If you're doing any type of program, expect a lot of paperwork. I'm currently still doing paperwork. It has not stopped, but I've never emailed so many people or send out so many emails in my entire life. This is very much so disciplined, but I really want to go on this trip, so, you know, gotta grow up some kind of way. I've also never been on my own. I don't know if I mentioned that in this video at all. I've never been on my own. To this day, I still live with my parents. Like, even with me being on college, I haven't lived on campus. This will be my first experience, like, like on my own, like, for real, for real. So this is gonna be not only a culture shock, but really kind of like a growth thing. I think I said everything that I need to say. But also, my channel is not just going to be about this trip. I'm going to have a lot of content regarding the trip. But after the trip, I'm still going to make content. Anyways, I don't have anything else to talk about. Thank you for whoever's watching this. Probably nobody. Probably nobody's watching this.
I'm really excited for my journey, not just for the study abroad trip, for this trip, but I'm really like excited to just put myself out here and make content and hopefully I can make money while doing it. I would love to do that. I really want to do this, like for real. And hopefully that'll push me towards other opportunities like singing opportunities because I like singing and I want to make music one day. And also acting, I want to do that. As I said in my you know, Q&A, again, watch that if you haven't. I don't have no connections. I don't have nobody famous following me that could be like, hey, watch this guy. No, this is literally something I'm doing from scratch. This is completely new to me. I'm just really excited to grow. I'm at, what, 600 something subscribers right now? Who knows? Maybe I can reach a thousand. Maybe I'll be at 100,000. Maybe, who knows what I'll be at by the end of the year. But I know I'm gonna grow. So yeah, thanks to whoever is watching this. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you. I know I'm goofy, but you know, I'm being myself and I don't care. Um, I'm really glad that I'm starting to be comfortable with who I am. I'm a child of my father in heaven first. Thank you for watching. Also follow me on all the socials at Lil Tony Bonner, L-I-L-T-O-N-Y-B-O-N-N-E-R. Follow me on Instagram. You can find me on TikTok. I have a Twitter, but I don't know how to wear Twitter, so I'm not gonna promote that. I have a Facebook. I only scroll on Facebook. Follow me on all the socials and let's see where this takes us. Listen, I love y'all with the love of God and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. Peace out. Family, peace out.